All right, everybody, it's Monday. I just sent out the new issue of MMT Trader. If you'd like to get it, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com, and sign up for a 30-day free trial. Remember, I am the only one who has an applied approach to MMT. I take MMT concepts and I meld them into a trading and investing approach. MMT, of course, is the concise and correct understanding of the functioning of the monetary system. Without that, basically, you're just guessing, okay? We understand, or I understand, the implications of policy and the effect of policy on the economy and therefore the markets. And everything is driven by policy. Now, let me go over a couple of things because the big, I guess, headline, the big story has been the inversion of the yield curve and that is getting um, that inversion is getting, is getting a little bit more extreme each day. Now, I have explained in the past how I believe this is something that has come about as a result of technical conditions. And by technical conditions, I do not mean charts. I mean three things primarily that I see uh, which is causing this inversion. Number one, the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling now uh, limits or makes the Treasury unable to offer new securities. So there is a supply issue. There's not enough Treasuries being sold now uh, to meet the demand. That's number one. And the debt ceiling is going to be in place because it seems like Congress is not in any rush to raise that or suspend that. That's going to be around for a while, probably until the end of the fiscal year. That's the end of September. As a matter of fact, Chuck Grassley, who is the Senate Finance Chairman, said, hey, we don't have to raise this until October. So they do have to raise it because it's creating problems. The next situation is the fact that the Fed said, number one, they're not going to raise interest rates this year, and number two, they are tapering and eventually ending their balance sheet roll off by September. So this too limits the available supply of treasuries. And number three, we are looking at reserve balances in Federal Reserve Banks at 1.6 trillion. That is the lowest level in six years. So the problem with that is Reserves being bank assets, now reserve balances at the lowest level in six years. The banks have to replace those assets. Remember, reserves are tier one assets. They're necessary for the banks to own in order to pass the stress test. They are uh, substituting treasuries for the loss of those reserve balances. So there's more demand. So you have that speculative demand based on the Fed saying we're going to end roll off and we're not going to raise rates. You have the problem of no new issuance because of the debt ceiling. And you have the lowest level of reserve balances in six years. So the banks needing to replace those tier one assets, they're buying treasuries. All right. So all those factors, it's like the perfect storm and it's creating the inversion of the yield curve. Now, for those who are predicting, I just went over, I just reread my report today, and you really should read the report because when you go through it, there's not really anything in there that is not bear, that is bearish. I mean, if you look at bank credit expanding, in some cases at the fastest pace in several years, even some of the bank metrics which had been expanding very slowly are now starting to accelerate. For example, auto loans rising at the fastest rate in eight months. Even real estate, which was real estate loans, which were expanding very, very slowly, almost flatlining, starting to pick up. Commercial and industrial loans, we've seen a double digit growth. Um, so you have uh, all of those bank metrics accelerating. Not, and most of them, by the way, are at all-time record highs in terms of the amount outstanding but the real thing to look at I think is the degree of acceleration is it expanding or is it slowing down and they're all expanding all right so you have that going on as far as the fiscal picture that too accelerating higher we are now 
140 billion over last year and last year was a record spending year so that is also um, something that is very positive if you look at um, within the fiscal flows social security rising at the fastest pace so far this year medicare the largest year-over-year -year increase of any uh, government expenditure uh, almost 50 billion over last year all of these items are very very positive I cannot go through that report and I reread it <coughs> sorry I reread it and what comes out from that report is a bunch of really really positive metrics so I know people are out there and they're saying that the inverted yield curve that is the perfect economist that has predicted look these predictions of recession based on the yield curve if you listen to some of them they're like oh yeah the yield curve went negative in 2006 and we went into a recession in 2008 I'm saying if, if you're calling that some kind of an uh, a, of a very prescient forecasting device but you're trying to correlate something that happened two years after you made that call to me that is coincidental that is not correlation show me something where it has uh, made a statement and immediately after or shortly thereafter with regularity you see the results of what you or what that device or, or, or that measurement or that condition was predicting you know you can't say oh yeah we had an inverted yield curve and two or three years later there was a recession a recession therefore there is a very powerful correlation I think people are drawing conclusions from this that are really not there but I stand by what I have been saying number one the inversion is technical I'm not saying it's uh, something benign or innocuous you know a large part of this has been mismanagement by the Fed by the way somebody asked me a question here saying how could you recommend re reducing uh, I mean uh, the Fed reducing reserves further let me just give you some historical background for 60 years and longer really uh, the level of reserve balances in Federal Reserve Banks averaged less than 20 billion dollars in some instances in some months it was as low as a few billion dollars five or six billion dollars and over that course of time this is from 1947 to 2008 banks made loans people bought houses and cars banks earned their profits the banking system worked smoothly and then the Fed ramped up reserves to 2.4 trillion when they had been averaging less than 20 billion okay now they brought it down to 1.6 trillion and everybody's trying to make a case that that is some you know extreme monetary tightening that is ridiculous for 60 years the average level of reserves in the banking system was less than 20 billion now you got 1.6 trillion and Powell is freaking out and a lot of Wall Street is freaking out that that is some kind of monetary tightening it is absolutely not a monetary tightening the banks themselves have been telling the Fed that they don't need all of these reserves so this is part of the problem if you look at leverage ratios which the banks have to comply with uh, uh, according to the Basel III leverage ratios are uh, part of, of the calculation of the leverage ratios includes bank reserves and when the Fed dumps or, or as a result of government spending when bank reserves blow through the roof as they have been banks either have to um, limit their lending or they have to raise capital to be in compliance or they have to sell assets it is not a positive thing as everybody seems to believe it is actually something that constrains the ability of banks to function uh, in the most efficient manner anyway all this stuff is in the report uh, you can sign up 30-day free trial MMT trader remember the only applied approach to MMT go to pitbulleconomics.com sign up today bye bye